Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Betty embodied a certain freedom about sexuality, and that was ahead of its time. Karen Essex, a popular person, said about Betty, and she was correct. There was nothing tame about Betty Page, and her boldness represented sexual freedom for all of America. She stirred loins of all genders, and allowed people to act on the desire society had taught them to repress. However, for her revolution, she paid a hefty price. Why Betty Page paid a hefty price for her freedom! Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Betty Page, pin-up girl to God's beloved. In an era where morality was the watchword with people acting publicly moral and doing nasty things in private, one woman took America by the genitals. Betty Page, the woman that redefined what pin-up meant to the people and made public officials, including judges, make private demands for the raciest of pictures. Morality? She made a hoax of it. But she didn't do it alone. What's better than a pin-up girl to adorn the walls of people in the 1950s? Two additional pin-up girls. Yes, Betty was flanked by her sister Goldie and the sister of her photographer Paula. The three formed an unholy trinity of pushing boundaries. These three exposed the American people for what they really were. Closet female body-loving people with kinky fetishes. It was a family business dedicated to fueling sensual fantasies in the American people. Betty and her sister rose from being orphanage children to wanting to become actresses. They had the body and the face for it, so why not, they thought. The glitz and glamour of Hollywood turned their heads, and they did get glamorous all right. They became glammed beauties of posters and picture books although later they did a small amount of screen work, but it was nothing on the level of the Hollywood they pursued. However, it's better than nothing. Goldie and Betty got into the world of racy modelling, and rather than let it split them, their bond grew even more robust. It didn't matter to Goldie was getting more fame, even as the two had their pictures taken together. It also didn't matter to Betty that photographers had a knack for showering her sister with more attention on shoots. They too maintained their familial ties. It was them against the world that had piled up misfortune for them at an early age. But there was a sibling rivalry between them, with them looking so alike, although it was nothing serious or sinister. Goldie pulled out of the game early. As much as she wanted to dazzle, she also wanted stability and create a family. Besides, she had reached her peak, and there wasn't anything for her to offer again. So Goldie dropped the excitement that came with modelling and chose to be an art teacher and a wife, although it was one of her modelling jobs that led her to the man that she married. Betty was married to the glamour, and with her sister out, she had more pairings with Paula, the sister of her photographer Irving Claw. The two did things to the people of America with their poses and costumes. They didn't do the regular shoots. Instead, Paula and Betty did bondage shoots together, with both taking turns dominating each other by tying each other up in different positions. People loved them as they brandished their whips in their tight leather fittings. However, it was Betty that resonated most with the audience, and was the one that the audience crowned the Queen of Bondage. Not many people could resist Betty's steamy looks when she was tied up and gagged. To the audience, she was the best. Irving Claw, her photographer, was right when he chose to work with the pin-up goddess and introduce her to the bondage theme. Honestly, she deserved the crown. Those pictures of her tied on a chair are far too irresistible. Don't get us started on the ones where she wrestled with Paula or other models for dominance. But there was one thing Betty didn't mention at the time. She didn't like the bondage shoots. It was something she had to do if she wanted her other pictures to get released. I never whipped anybody in my life. It was all pretend. I had to do at least an hour of bondage poses in order to get paid for the other modelling work. The star revealed as she regretted the bondage shoots she took. It was those shoots that ruined her life eventually. Those shots that gave everyone else glee led to the star model becoming a shut-in to the extent that nobody else saw her, not even her beloved sister Goldie. 
The two only communicated with letters, but the content of their letters showed that they still had their bond as sisters. Goldie cherished and hoarded the letters. She kept them until her death and passed them over to her son. In those letters Betty wrote about her fears and insecurities about how she looked growing old. She also related her mental health problems to her sister, even though she wasn't as descriptive of the nature of the illness. For example, Betty would write how much she was eating more than usual due to her feeling depressed, a side effect of the pills doctors gave her to help her cope with her psychotic breaks. Yes, the star that hung on the walls of many people eventually became psychotic. She suffered so much because someone decided to use her as a pawn in their game to acquire power. Sad, isn't it? But even as her life was dotted by misery and disappointment, true to her southern spirit, the curvy star refused to give up. Betty May Page was born in Kingsport, Tennessee, April 22, 1923. The star was born into poverty with her father's mechanic job, barely able to put food on the table. Things were so bad with her family that her mother divorced her father and her father headed to jail for stealing a car. Eventually her mother couldn't cope with taking care of her children alone, so she took them to an orphanage. It was either that or the children would starve. In the orphanage Betty and her siblings learned to be resourceful. They began well at making their clothes and doing their make-up, an ability that would later come to serve the pin-up goddess. Betty left the orphanage, but it wasn't because happiness had finally come to her and her siblings. Their father had gotten out of prison, so they went to live with him. This turned out to be a fatal mistake. Betty's dad was attracted to the voluptuous body of his teenage daughter, and he took advantage of her. It was her that created the underlying trauma that would consume her as she grew older, but at the time the model shook it off, throwing herself at schoolwork. Her dedication towards school paid off big time. The actress had an almost perfect high school CGPA, and because of her beauty, intelligence and drive, she became the homecoming queen. As the final reward for her hard work, she got a scholarship to go to college. At last, things seemed to be looking good for the model. She got into college with her career choice in mind. She would become a teacher, but in her second year she changed her mind about teaching to acting. So, to achieve her acting dreams, she changed her major to Bachelor's in Arts. She saw her program to completion and graduated from college. Bring in the acting roles, she thought, but Hollywood didn't work that way. Hollywood was a slippery eel. When you thought you'd got it, it slips out of your hands. Biding her time, the actress focused on other things. She married her long-time heartthrob, William Neal, who was mobilised to join the war after their marriage. Now living in San Francisco due to her marriage, the actress began looking for work as an actress, but didn't have much luck. She was already getting older, and in that Hollywood era, old wasn't gold. She got a secretary job and worked as a model on the side. The proceeds she got from modelling convinced her that she should continue at it. Although it wasn't easy for her to become a model, a leading model agency rejected her on account of her height and voluptuousness, but she quickly put disappointment aside. She was determined to have the last time, and soon enough the opportunity came. Hollywood finally saw her. Last laugh, here I come, Betty thought, but it wouldn't be so. She got a screen test, and she failed that screen test. The man that evaluated her wanted her to fail. The man chose a look that didn't compliment Paige at all, and after, he hinted that he would make her pass, if she'll accept the pass he made at her if you catch our drift. To be sure we are on the same page, we'll be blunt. He wanted to sleep with her. The curbs on the pin-up queen called to him, and he wanted to grab her waist as he ploughed deep into her. Betty refused. She was angry. How dare the man? She was married, and he dared to bring this sort of offer to her. I don't mind sleeping with someone to get ahead, but I'm not going to sleep with everyone, Paige later said. She was very much loyal to her husband. Just that not long after, she and her husband divorced, and she would never get another screen test again throughout her life. Not that she needed any. She moved to New York, and finally the stars began to align for her. However, she found herself the object of attention of a police officer, but she wasn't in any trouble. It turned out the police officer, Jerry Tibbs, was an amateur photographer, and the pin-up star was the best person he could practice with, so he approached the star with a deal. 
He would take pictures of her, and she would pose as a model for him. It was a win-win situation. The alluring model would have a portfolio of pictures, and Tibbs would get practice. Tibbs was the one who recommended the pin-up legend's signature look. He styled the racy model by suggesting that she cut her hair so that her bangs would sit above her eyes. Jerry Tibbs felt the bangs would go well with the star's forehead. He was right. Thank you, Tibbs. The sultry woman began to appear in a couple of popular magazines like Wink, and she was involved in the film Stripperama. In the film she wasn't stripping to nakedness, as the name suggested, but for the 1950s it was enough to set tongues wagging. Betty became renowned, and she found herself in the Playboy magazine 1955 shoot, where she was in the holiday spirit. By holiday spirit we mean she wore a Santa hat and less of any other clothing. That shoot solidified her as the best of the best. People wanted more of her. Walls bore her images, and with that shoot she expanded her modelling. Irving Claw, the self-styled pin-up king, with preferences for bonded shoots, contacted the actress to work with her. With the pictures they produced, they created a rave, and soon they created trouble for themselves. Unfortunately, they attracted the attention of a morality-posturing politician, Senator Estes Cafava. The Senator claimed the pin-up king and queen were corrupting the American youth's morals. The Senator formed a subcommittee on the issue, and like that, Betty was in trouble. She began to panic. She didn't want to testify against Claw and the rest of their pin-up crew. Everything the actress had built began to burn before her eyes. Her gut wrenched. Her mind cracked further than before. Her mental health also suffered from the stress of thinking about the whole trial. Irving had become ruined and Paige hightailed out of town. But getting away from everything didn't provide the results Betty wanted. All the pain she had suffered in her life settled in her mind, and it began to fracture. But the cracks weren't obvious yet. She abandoned her life as a pin-up girl and got married. She continued to stay under the radar, but she wanted more out of life. So she attended a Baptist church in Florida. The experience was so powerful for her that she became a Christian. Her newfound faith and the life she led in the past warred in her head. She divorced her new husband, and after a while she remarried, but at this point the voluptuous pin-up star had gone past her threshold. Psychotic breaks happened more often than not, one of the most dangerous of her psychotic episodes being when she brandished a gun during a religious retreat, screaming at the very top of her lungs about the coming of retributions of God. Another was when she held her family hostage. Her third husband had kids from his previous marriage. During one of her episodes, the star held a knife to them and had them pray to Jesus. It was a harrowing experience that led her to get committed in Jackson Memorial. At this point, she had lost all her wealth and had to rely on social benefits, checks, to survive. This meant she didn't get the treatment she deserved and continued to be prone to violent psychotic breaks. Apparently, she had schizophrenia, and it was until she attacked her landlady with a knife that doctors reached this diagnosis. She was committed to the Patton State Hospital for almost two years, and when she got out, she viciously attacked her landlady, who only barely survived the attack. This time she got ten years committal to the same Patton State Hospital. At this point people got curious about her. They wondered where the super pin-up model had gone. The curiosity around her gained traction that it became a cult following. Penthouse magazines were ready to pay anyone $1,000 for information about where she could be. Different rumours were flying around. When the model got out of committal, Hefner visited her and saw how unfairly she had been treated. While the star didn't have any money, some magazines still sold her pictures and made money off her. Hugh said no more. He got the best agent to help Betty recover her royalties. Things began to look better for Paige, who marvelled at her newfound popularity. Though it took a while, the model came to terms with her younger years as a model. However, she was stubborn about avoiding the media, and she did this until she lost her life to pneumonia. The legendary pin-up girl had inspired an era of sexual freedom, and has had a film about her which was moderately successful. Through her, Americans got the freedom they craved, but were too afraid to claim. Betty Page didn't have much left to hide. 
but others have had serious secrets to hide. Why, Kim Novak had to hide her interest of love. Watch this video.